I'm Scott Allen Miller, and I'm an expat living in Latin America. With all the changes going on in the United States right now, we have an awful lot of people who are interested either in looking at becoming expats or they may be concerned about what changes in the United States may mean for either becoming an expat or continuing to be an expat. So with that in mind, today I think is a good time to look into a little bit of President Trump's proposed tax changes, which of course we don't know exactly how these are going to play out once he actually becomes president, but he has some proposed tax tax changes that are rather significant and are going to be specifically super interesting for those who are either expats or looking to become expats, and they're going to play out in ways that you may not expect, so it's well worth digging into. So let's talk about what is the proposed future of the U.S. tax system and how it matters for expats and those Americans who are living abroad. How's it going to affect you around the world? Right after that bump. This may come to, as a really large shock to a lot of people who are looking into becoming an expat and have never actually thought about tax regimes and how they vary between whether you're living domestically within the borders of the United States or you are living externally away from the borders of the United States. But the new proposed tax changes uh, coming under President Trump are very specifically designed to encourage expatting financially, meaning they are tuned to make it maximally beneficial for you to be an expat and to put the burden on those Americans who stay behind and live within the American borders to cover a lot of tax bases that you would have had to have paid for previously. So this is a big incentivization. It's well worth considering how strongly uh, Trump's new tax regime is very specifically benefiting expats. It is as if a group of expats got together and talked to him and said, this is, this is what would do the best to encourage us to stay outside the U.S. And he said, yep, that's what we're looking for. So this, there's a message being sent here by the federal government that probably there's plenty of people inside the United States. We have a housing uh, problem. We don't want to have to focus on building new houses. How do you offset some of that? You, you know, we know that there is a uh, proposed encouragement of uh, uh, lack of immigration for for a softer term, uh, as well as encouraging uh, legal Americans to consider living abroad as well. So we're going to see this very consistently as a story. So that's that's good. We're not seeing uh, different stories from different parts of the government. This is a single message being sent that they're looking for fewer people to be inside the United States, more people to be outside, whether they are American citizens outside or uh, expats who had been living in the United States no longer being able to retain their expat status, at least with the United States. Okay, so let's dig into this. What are the changes that we see coming? Uh, before we actually get to that, we have to kind of establish a baseline. What do we have as kind of a grand scheme about taxes for expats who are American living abroad? So the first thing is, as an American, and this isn't going to change whether you have Trump or not, or few, you know, there's no pr pr uh, 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 proposed changes to this anytime in the future, is that the United States is a global tax regime, meaning any income that you earn anywhere in the world must be reported to the U.S. That doesn't mean you have to pay taxes on it, but you certainly must file your taxes and report that you are making that money anywhere in the in the world. Uh, so all, let's say you make uh, $10,000 in one country and $10,000 in another and $10,000 in another and accumulated, you come up to $200,000 per year. You have to report that to the United States and you have to pay taxes on it, income tax on it as if you had earned it in the United States. There's some intricacies there, but the basics are the basics. It doesn't really matter where you earn your money, which is terrible in some ways and very, very simple in others. And we're going to see why it's actually not as bad as it seems. I'm not saying it's great, but it's not, it's not as bad as it seems. From that, if you are truly living abroad, not just on vacation, not just taking a little trip, not just doing it very temporarily, but if you are truly an expat who's living outside the United States, I'm not going to go into exactly the rules here, but it's it's pretty straightforward. Walks like a duck, talks like a duck. If you are a full expat and you truly do not live in the United States and not using the resources of the domestic United States, you're given a certain amount of tax uh, um, relief for that because if you do live in the United States, right, if you're a normal, everyday, 
Iowan and you just go to work at the factory, uh, you have a certain amount of your taxes that you pay go towards your uh, healthcare infrastructure, your road infrastructure, your internet infrastructure, your uh, police infrastructure, your you, those things, right? Very obvious. You look around, there's all these services that America or its states and counties or whatever provide. Normally, that goes through the federal government. Then they hand that money out to the local governments to, to dole out on a local basis. Um, you are using those resources one way or another, even if it's just the fire department, right? They, they need to watch over you. So the certain amount of your tax dollars goes to covering the services you are consuming or, or are likely to consume. It has to be an average. Uh, and then beyond that, you, you pay taxes to help support the country more generally. It goes into the great pool used by everyone. If you are an expat, a true one, again, we, we have some videos that dig into the rules on this if you want to find out exactly how it works and exactly how it would apply to you. But it, it is pretty straightforward, believe it or not. And uh, you get this a foreign earned tax credit that is uh, actually pretty sizable. So on a per person basis, currently at the time I'm making this video, I believe it is $126,000 per year. So if you earn $126,000 per year as a salary or less, while you still have to file your taxes, you will not owe anything. You can pay, but you'll get them back, right? It's the same as if you weren't earning. But if you weren't earn $127,000 per year, then you'll take one twenty six dollars off and you'll pay taxes as if you earned $1,000 a year. If you earn a million dollars a year, you'll get a little bit of a discount, but you'll still pay most of your taxes, right? So the idea is that if you would have been paying into the great pool of American taxes, you will still do so. You'll still be helping America financially in the same way you always have. And if you don't use as many resources as you are avoiding uh, if you're if you're not using any resources you don't have to pay for those so you get a credit for what you don't use it's actually a really good system and it's been in place for a long time and they're not looking to particularly change that I'm sure it'll shift numbers slightly it always does but the idea is not going to change at least it's not proposed to do so so what is proposed to change under Trump's new tax uh, regime? So the first thing is, if this number is to change, we expect it to change a bit, that it's actually going to become a bit of a higher number rather than the normal incremental movements. That's just a guess. So let's be clear, we're just guessing on that. But uh, the, one of the things that is proposed is completely eliminating the income tax of this type. So there's a possibility that the shift here is going to be that there is no taxes that need to be paid for income in this way. Now, that's a long shot, right? And and obviously people jump at that, but they, there's just taxes somewhere else. It's just how taxes are paid. So don't get too excited. But as an expat, eliminating that, especially if it eliminates the need to file, would be fantastic. It would just make our lives a lot easier and more straightforward. And of course, if you're able to earn above that 126 number, then you're going to see that benefit because there's nowhere else to tax you. That's one of the great things about being an expat is that the only place that you can be taxed is through that very specific specific income tax regime. Uh, and so if you don't have that, you will be relieved from that. Of course, if you own businesses in the United States, you're paying capital gains. None of that is affected. That is a separate thing. Those taxes are generally paid by the entity, not by you particularly. So you're affected by the taxes, but that's not what we're talking about, right? So that we, there could be changes, of course, but that's, that's not what we're looking at. So from an income tax perspective, we expect there to be either no change or a positive change where we're simply able to earn more, possibly unlimited, without paying income tax uh, while living abroad. The, the bigger change, the, the way that this is going to be offset, what is proposed very strongly, this is not, not a maybe sort of, this is, a, this is what he said he's going to do, is by putting a large amount of tariffs on incoming products to the United States. So the idea here is that instead of taxing the people at the time that their money is earned, that they will tax products at the time that they enter the U.S., making it so that there is an incentive, in theory, to create products inside the United States, uh, which will then not be subject to those tariffs, uh, and, and therefore lower taxes, and only products that are coming from the outside will be paying those taxes. And so the desire is to eliminate the income tax and have people who are consuming foreign-made products, which is 99% of the products in the United States, uh, to be paying the taxes because they chose foreign made products. And so the, the taxes will just shift around. It is similar to paying a 
uh, sales tax. So that has been proposed as well in the past, not under Trump, I don't believe. Uh, but there, you know, it's just one of those tax ideas that people kick around that instead of doing income tax, which is costly and confusing and complicated and easy to cheat, uh, moving to a sales tax system where anytime you buy a product, you pay more taxes there. We pay taxes there currently, but having a federal sales tax of maybe 10% and then everybody pays that at the time that they consume. And the reason that that's good is whether you make $100 a year or $100 billion a year, you're going to pay based on all the things you purchase and rich people buy a lot more things than poor people, right? So that in theory shifts uh, to consumerism to cover the cost of product. So that's an idea that's been out there. So the tariff concept is related to this, but it's not at the point of sale. It is at the point of importation. So not all products get imported. Of course, a lot of domestic products have components that are imported. So they would pay those tariffs on those portions and not on other portions that are produced domestically uh, under a tariff system. So it's a little bit more complicated to describe and understand, but the idea is that most of the products in the world have to come either partially or completely from overseas when they enter the, or near shore could be coming from Mexico. And when it enters the United States, then there's going to be a tax paid by the importer by whatever American entity is bringing those products into the United States will then pay uh, up to like 60 to 100 percent more as they do for like electric vehicles, for example, uh, with the idea of protecting American uh, production and, and keeping those things in the United States. What this obviously risks doing is that American made products can just raise their prices because they don't have competition. Uh, so you're going to see domestic products go way up in price. And of course, you're going to see products from around the world have to go up in price, right? You put a 60% tariff on a product, it goes up by 60%, period, right? And it's paid for by the importer. So Americans have to pay that importation tax before you purchase the product. So a warehouse that's going to hold on to, let's say you have cell phones coming into the country, they're going to go up in price by 60%. That's simply up by 60%. And they have to be held in a warehouse with that money having already been spent. So unlike a sales tax where the money is only uh, lost back to the government at the time that someone actually consumes it, so warehouses don't have to pay it. It doesn't have to sit in tied up uh, financial resources. These are tied up early, whether it's the time that raw materials enter the country or the time that the product goes to warehouse. And so there's a, a uh, 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 interest rate that has to be paid on that as well. So we're going to see a kind of cumulative increase in domestic product prices. So the, the expectation, of course, is this is designed for maximizing inflation. This is expected to have a huge inflationary effect. We will see the cost of goods go way up inside the United States as these taxes and interest on these taxes have to be paid quite early domestically uh, and and a because we are removing the free market and moving away from capitalism like completely eliminating capitalism uh, as a as a basic tenant without a free market normally uh, you get really high uh, rates uh, of price increases because domestic products don't need to compete so heavily that lack of globalization in market competition always raises prices dramatically so for those living in the United States uh, the expectation is that it's going to be this shift to transparent taxes, which is great. You know exactly what you're going to pay, but you'll be paying way more than you're paying today. So that is the design, right? There, It's crystal clear. The design is to increase inflation. Um, and a lot of countries feel that their inflation is too low. That's not normally the sentiment we get from the United States, but most Americans are very confused about the value of inflation and actually seek it out. And it does have a lot of important benefits that we talk about from time to time. If you have a house loan, for example, you pay a certain amount per month, inflation protects you from that and helps you pay less of your paycheck over time as you need to earn more and more to make the same amount of money, but your monthly payments do not go up. So inflation helps a lot of people. There's a lot of pro benefits to it. So uh, we don't normally see the United States tuning their uh, tax laws and, and stuff for the purpose of encouraging inflation. But there are times that that makes sense. And I live myself in a country where uh, they see the United States as having too low of an inflation rate. And so they tie their domestic currency to the United States, but add an intentional additional inflation rate to it because they want to see a small amount of additional inflation, not a huge amount, just a small amount of additional inflation over the U.S. to for maximizing the local economy. So it's a perfectly valid uh, way to be looking at the tax system and a desire of how the currency will be treated over time. Uh, so that is what will play out in the United States. But understanding that is just 
there for the purpose of understanding how that's going to impact expats. Now, an expat is not a domestic consumer inside the United States. So when we're talking about a tariff system, we're talking about shifting the burden from American earners to American uh, consumers. Now, that's normally the same people, right? You earn money in the United States, you consume things in the United States. So those are almost 100% the same people. In the, in the Venn diagram of American earners and consumers, they basically are overlapping circles. Not 100%, but super, super close. When we're talking about expats, we are generally having most of them are American earners still, but not all, but a great number. But they are not American consumers or in very, very small amounts. It's possible, for example, where I live, you can go out and order products from Amazon, have it shipped in. And when I do that, I'm an American consumer. But if I buy things directly from China, for example, for which it is easier for me to do than it is for someone who is living inside the United States, I am not an American consumer. I'm a Chinese consumer. So uh, the, the overlap there is different. It still exists, but it is not the one-to-one -one expectation that is inside the United States. This decoupling of the earning and the uh, tax base is really interesting because as an expat living most anywhere in the world, what you're going to get is on the, cons on the earning side, your salary will no longer have the tax burden that it does today, whether it's simply less or none at all. Uh, depending on what your earning rate is and exactly how they adjust it, uh, you're going to be paying no more taxes and most likely quite a bit fewer, lesser taxes than you are today. So you have extra spending power. The cost of goods going into the United States will go up, but that will not impact you because you are not getting your products passed through the United States. As an expat living abroad, it is unlikely that your supply chain will come from the U.S. And of course, it will make the whole world reduce its use of U.S. supply chain because products that pass through the U.S. will be much more expensive than products that don't. So this will shift global manufacturing out of the United States. Of course, that is by design, right? So the uh, idea is that if you live somewhere, we're just going to say you live in Peru and you want to get a new cell phone, that cell phone is going to come directly from uh, China, directly from Taiwan, directly from India, directly from Vietnam, one of the countries that is producing the final product. It will then come with low or no tariff directly to your country, never pass through the U.S. As an American living abroad as an expat, that means you are not paying income tax. It also means you're not paying the tariffs. So for you as an expat, this is a massive incentive to say your money is going to go so much farther because you're going to get the lowest global rates on products while also getting the lowest global rates on taxes. So this is an important retuning of the tax system to shift the burden away from expats. Now, the number of American expats around the world, while people talk about them a lot, isn't actually that large of a number. It will increase. A system like this is so financially advantageous to push workers out of the United States that, of course, a number of people are going to simply jump at it, regardless of any political discussion, purely financially. It it makes it so beneficial for Americans who are able to, to move out of the United States, especially white collar workers who are not uh, in a position of needing to work with their hands, but are able to work online, whether it's uh, on the phone or at a computer or doing creative work or investing work or whatever. This is such a strong incentive to tell them that the thing that America wants uh, based on its laws and tax code is for you to move abroad, to do that earning and to do your purchasing remote. It's a hard one to fight against that desire of the government, it is just such a strong financial incentive. You can live so much better. You already have benefits today. That's why many of us are expats. It is a great system now, but this makes it so much better that it's hard to believe that uh, many people will turn it down. Basically, if you have access to it, this is what the government wants you to do. This is what's best for you and your family. Why not take advantage of it? So from a tax perspective, this is really interesting and really important. So uh, as you're looking towards uh, at the time that I'm recording this, we're about two months away from the Trump presidency taking uh, effect. We don't know how long it's going to take before tax changes uh, roll through the system, whether they're really going to follow through on the things that are said. But these are the proposed changes. This is what they've been saying they want to do. And this is what it means for you. Uh, so it's important to say, well, what if the changes don't happen? Are the current uh, tax and, and tariff regimes good enough for you to want to be an expat? Uh, but the bigger concern, of course, that people have is what are the changes coming and will they make me not want to be an expat? Will I regret that decision? And no, it is absolutely crystal clear that Trump's administration is prioritizing making people love being expats, want to become expats, and will maximize the benefits of those who are flexible enough to be expats. And they're putting the burden on American um, blue-collar workers. If you're a 
a factory worker, anyone who has to report to the office, anyone who cannot leave the domestic United States, they're going to shift the tax burden that is currently a global one purely on to them. Not sure what the uh, what what the final end goal of that is, but it is really, really clear uh, as to what the goal is. So as expat says, people who live in that expat community, this is a 100% positive move for us. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you have any questions, get down there in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking, what you want to know. Um, send in video comments. We love being able to put people on the show. If you want to help support us here, we do have a membership. It's purely just to support uh, the show. It doesn't have any real particular benefits other than our private chat group, but uh, it is, it's just $5 a month and really does help a lot with what we do here. Or you can just buy me a coffee at the link that I'll show above and in the show notes, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Al Miller. That comes directly to me. A few coffees go a really long way to help keeping me energized and doing this show every day. It takes a lot of energy and time and a lot of money for the cameras and stuff. So I really appreciate everyone who helps support the work that we do here. And I will see all of you tomorrow.